past president of our university showcased our mission to make the desert bloom and its global impact. Former US President Ronald Reagan portrayed a far vaster mission. To quote him, space seemed like a vast black desert, but now we're ready to make the desert bloom. We're talking about opening space up to business, to private enterprise, opening space up to commerce, experimentation, and development. And that prompts today's topic, which is energy and sustainability for the final frontier, space. What creates unique and new challenges is the explosive commercialization of space. The kinds of applications I'll be addressing are satellites and lunar colonization. The companies involved, you've probably heard of SpaceX, Virgin Galactic, Blue Origin, uh, Moon Express, there are dozens of them. And uh, it's moved beyond, space has moved beyond government institutions to private companies. So what's critically needed is lower cost and higher efficiency for the solar power on the satellites or on the moon. For an, a government institution, uh, profitability is secondary. For private companies, it's make or break. Motivated by the current solar market for space, specifically the solar component, being more than $1 billion and growing rapidly. And how are we answering the challenge? And the answer is with innovative, miniaturized solar concentrators. There's a drawing in the lower right for the types of satellites that you see. In the lower left, I will elaborate this shortly. To give you an idea, here's a second uh, prototype, which we'll elaborate shortly. One can replace about 100 expensive solar cells by one cheap cell and by, 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 by one cell, sorry, and cheap optics. And what we've achieved so far is unprecedented compactness and solar power, critical because launch costs from this planet exceed $100,000 per kilogram. Our prototypes are much less expensive, order of magnitude, and much more efficient, a factor of two. They're modular and they're scalable, meaning they can be installed for any power demand that's required. Let me be specific. Our first generation, which we invented and published and prototyped two years ago, has a record high power per mass, kilowatts per kilogram. And you see a drawing here of the entire array. It's one and a half millimeters thick to give you perspective. The pane of glass in your window or in your home is three millimeters. Uh, NASA, the US Space Agency, was sufficiently, sufficiently intrigued that it launched and installed our prototype on the International Space Station on the 25th of March last year. It was just brought back to Earth and is now being characterized. To give you perspective, here is a, a photograph of the cell against the common United States coin, and here's the entire prototype, many of which would be installed for satellite power with a different US coin. Our second generation, which we invented and prototyped this year, is superior. It's a fundamentally new kind of optic. You see it drawn here, and then the glass, all glass prototype. One has less array for the same power, and it has record compactness. To put it in perspective, here is the size of the cells that are now being produced in the United States, 0 0.17 millimeters on a side. For perspective, two, piece, sorry, two pieces of paper are 0 0.2 millimeters thick. The size of this cell is less. Everything fits in one millimeter, and here is our prototype, which uh, is now being considered for future missions. Now, where can we go next? It's viable and sustainable solar power for colonizing the moon. The dominant energy consumer in lunar colonization will be oxygen generation from lunar soil and sunlight exclusively. Here's the artist's rendition of a solar-driven oxygen-producing factory on the moon. The oxygen will be used for rocket propellant, for lunar launches, for satellite refueling, and for human sustenance. We're currently collaborating with the Israeli corporation Helios, where the Japanese space agency has assured us that should we have a viable oxygen reactor that is solar driven, they will install it on the moon by the end of 2024. And I'd like to close with a wonderful quote that characterizes our research and our approach to these problems by the late United States, Robert F. United States Senator Robert F. Kennedy. While there are those who look at things the way they are and ask why, 
I dream of things that never were and ask why not. Thank you. Mm -hmm.